and she's me the Alcohol is a tricky mistress. It makes people feel good at first, but then it backstabs them by making them do all kinds of crazy stuff. Most people probably regret their actions as they sober up, but I have a sneaky suspicion that most people on today's list never regret anything. They're too entitled to feel something like that. And today, we have a special selection of drunk Karens and Darrens who go above and beyond to show us just how special they are. Do they get punished in the end? Let's investigate. What's up? Appears to be intoxicated. I can't put her in that manner. Okay. Bro, are you serious? Las Vegas flight? You called the You're not, listen. Listen, listen, you're not being. Listen, I'm not fing intoxicated. I can get on the fing plane. I cannot fing afford the next fing ticket. So, where the f is the manager and who the f paid for my next f ticket? Because I'm manager. not paying for this. Sh she is the manager. Okay, then you'll get paid for the fing ticket for me to get to California because I'm not paying for this. I'm perfectly fine. She, I'm not fing uh, intoxicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not fing. No, they Pay for the next f Pay what? for it, period. Come talk to me, please. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's stop right here for a second, because this is escalating fast. The incident happened on March 22nd, 2021 at the Fort Lauderdale International Airport. But the crazy thing is, is that this woman was drinking at the bar and fell asleep. She woke up 45 minutes after her flight had already left. That's when she started berating the staff and they had to call the police. Let's see what happens next. I'm talking to you, bro. Oh, they should have let me on this plane. Okay, She's what? being a She let's, fucking let's it. Let's start from the beginning. It. Let's start from the beginning, all right? You want to start from the top? All right, yeah. What ha you you obviously arrived here, and what happened when you got here? I don't you know. know. I was literally sleeping. I listen, I'm standing right here. I was fucking sleeping, waiting for the the plane, bro. Oh, where over here? Literally right there. Yes. Okay, so then what happened? Yes. So, then what happened? Well, you were sleeping. You woke up. I woke up to uh -huh. them complaining about me. I don't wait, wait. understand what, do what the were, problem is. What were they complaining I just want to get on the plane. I just want to go home. All right. I just, let, me, let me see your ID so I can get some information. This is usually the moment people get confrontational. Providing ID is the moment the police would first invade your privacy, and a lot of people get confrontational in such moments. But with this woman, we're already way beyond that point. I'm surprised he hasn't detained her already or even arrested her for disorderly conduct because her shouting has to be bothering the other passengers. She has my ID. No, she might have the, no, your driver's license or passport. Okay. So let's see. I had a mask. I had the, this was fine. I got through TSA perfectly fine. So I'm good. This is the fucking mask. All right. So Thank this, you. It's Diaz. Yes. Let's go, let's go talk up front. No, I want to talk right here. You can't Because I'm not going. I'm getting on the plane. See, the door is closed. They can't reopen. I'm not paying for this sh I'm not talking about I'm not pay paying Listen, for it. I'm, I'm not, not doing that. I'm not saying you have to pay for anything. <laughs> I want to go home, and she's me the All right. If you don't stop now, you're just gonna have to, you're gonna have to come with me and, and go to the county jail. If that's the if that's what you want, that's what we can do. It's up to you right now. Make a decision. What are you gonna put me in jail for? And I'm for not having done anything illegal. For being in an airport, you're causing a disturbance. You can be arrested for that. You want to do that? It's up to you. Huh, this Karen seems to be calming down, but talk about a temper tantrum. When I heard her scream, I thought about my kid when she used to behave in a similar way, but she didn't know any better because she was three years old. What's this Karen's excuse? And how calm is this cop? If it was up to me, I'd put her in jail from the get-go. And even though she's calm at the moment, I have a feeling she isn't done yet and that this deputy will have to step up to the plate sooner or later. Let's see. I'm giving you the option. You can either listen. Home. You can walk quietly. I want to go home. Miss Diaz, you can. You're not I want to go home. She's being a. Well, let's go. Come on. 
No, I want to go home. Then you go, then no. you, it's either you go front with me or you go to jail. It's one or the other. That's the only two choices we have. Where do you want me to go? What the oh, f***? You want me to talk about this thing? I just told you! The same thing I just told you! Put your hands on your back. No, I'm not getting arrested. No, I'm not getting arrested. No, no. I don't need to get arrested, bro. I'm fine. I'm listening to you. We're talking, bro. No, you're not listening. Yes, I am. You don't need to arrest me. No, you don't. You don't need to arrest me. For the life of me, I just can't understand these Karens. Do they think officers of the law are just there for show? Do they not realize that they'll get arrested if they keep up with their erratic behavior? I mean, she was given plenty of time to calm down, and she got numerous warnings. She's so entitled, she keeps acting crazy. What did she expect would happen? It's like she wanted to go to jail. Okay, the handcuffs are on. I have to lock it. Relax. You grab her stuff. Yeah. Are you detaining me? No, you're being arrested. Are you detaining me? Oh well, yeah, and you're being arrested. Get disorderly found up. I'm gonna have to take her 1019 because I don't have a. I'm in a pool car. I don't have a printer or nothing. <laughs> Please, please. Please, can we just talk about it outside? I don't can we what? Can we just talk about whatever it is we're talking about outside? I gave you like four or five opportunities. Do you have your computer? I have, I, have my, I have my laptop, yeah. You can probably print it from mine. We'll try it. I gave you like four or five opportunities to walk and talk with me. And then you, you kept throwing a fit, then you started to walk, then you threw your stuff on the ground, everybody's looking at you, you have to go to jail. Please, We're in an airport. Please, We're not at the friggin' county, not the, the park. Please. 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 I'm just gonna go home. I'm just gonna go home. You're gonna get home, it's just gonna be a little delayed. Again, it's like listening to myself reprimanding my three-year-old. Seems that some people never grow up emotionally. They keep behaving like snot-nosed kids who can't understand what's going on or the repercussions of their actions. So this Karen is obviously in for a tough lesson now. Let's see how she takes it. Please, I just wanna go home, please, please. I wasn't even doing anything in the airport. I don't even know why he even said anything. I was sleeping, I sh I was sleeping, bro. I was sleeping and they woke me up with that Please, 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 please. I cannot stay the night in jail, please. I don't want anyone here having nothing. I don't have any money. I'm not even gonna be able to bail myself out. <laughs> <laughs> well, she took it as we all probably expected her to do in a puddle of tears. After all that rage and calling people names, it's time to turn to a victim and try to sob your way out. But this woman's sobbing isn't even believable though. There are almost no tears. It's like she's just making yet another scene. Please, 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 please. please. Right, we're gonna pat you down here. We have a female behind you, she's gonna pat you down. Can you please? Uh, yeah, if I wasn't in the pool car, I would. Please, please, please. I don't want to go. Please, please. Let me pat her down first for you. Yeah, yeah. You got her? I got her. I wasn't doing anything. I was literally sleeping. I was literally sleeping. I don't know why they got so mad. Entitled and delusional. Those are the two words that best describe people like this. She's entitled enough to allow herself to have a tantrum in a public space and scold people around her. And she's delusional enough that she still doesn't recognize or doesn't want to realize what she did wrong. <laughs> 
Please. You have anything on you that's gonna poke me? No, or anything? I just wanna or go. Shark? Oh, please. <laughs> Please, let me go to California, please. Please! Please, please. Please. I don't, I can't. I don't know what I'm gonna do, please! Seriously, are you serious? Please, please let me stay. Please. Please, I don't have anyone to bail me out. I can't afford to bail me out. Please. Please. Bro, I don't have anything. Like, come on. In the end, this woman did not manage to cry her way out of trouble. She was charged with public intoxication, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. Somehow, the only thing I keep thinking about is what would happen if she'd boarded the flight. All those passengers don't even realize how lucky they were. It's not always female Karens who get drunk at the airport and cause a mess. Meet Ryan Austin Martin, a huge 280-pound man who did the same thing as the Karen in the previous video. Got drunk, missed his flight, and then harassed everyone around him. But that's where the similarities end, because this guy had no intention of going down without a fight. So I'm not being arrested. While waiting to board the plane, Ryan kept frequenting the nearby bar and somehow missed the call to board the plane. Once he realized what happened, he decided to try and board another flight by force. He yelled at people, assaulted his wife and six-year-old daughter, and even wanted to fight the cops. He was sitting next to us, and he, he was getting kind of loud. And then he, right here, this area? Right here, right in these seats here. And he was getting kind of loud, and then uh, she sitting at was sitting next to me and he just, he actually said to her not he says oh really i'm being bad he says i'll drop you right here and i leaned over to her and i said are you safe so you told her and i was going to drop you right he here. was going to drop his wife right. he threatened it and okay. all sorts of stuff but i did get security and i good. tried good to help so good i appreciate right. you thank you wow that must have been terrifying just imagine such a huge guy being loud and threatening to drop someone. Would you dare intervene? I mean, this woman really had some guts. Let's hear what another witness had to say. We got here. We, I guess he's in reach about flying. Okay. And um, when, you know what the Dunkin' Donuts is? Yes. He kind of lost him. He was yelling and screaming. Um, first he had people for no reason. Like if you're standing, they just curse at you know, so I wasn't, I was more concerned with them. We were kind of, I kind of, uh, he's cursing and yelling. Um, he came over to us and um, stepped on yelling and screaming loud and went to the bar two different times. Um, and then came back over here yelling and screaming, cursing. Um, just got the words once I said that I was going to call security. On the way here, you know, they were telling us that he, he had put in the hands of the Yeah, he tried to pull my hair. Tried to pull hair. Yeah, that's what they told us on the radio. That's why we're coming fast. Yeah. And you said he's your husband? Has he done this before? He's been no, no, but the drinking, yes. When he drinks, he becomes aggressive. Yes. 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 When she asked the cop if he knew where Dunkin' Donuts was, I almost burst out laughing. He's a cop for Pete's sake, of course he knows where the donut shop is. But drunken aggression is a serious matter. The wife then says her husband came with a glass of something from the bar, presumably alcohol. When the airport supervisor first arrived, she immediately understood what was going on. 
Since she couldn't physically remove the suspect, she did the next best thing. So we received a call from the agent at gate 48 that a supervisor... If you want to take it off so I can, so you can catch uh, your voice, but it's okay. That we need a supervisor. There's a, a, a customer being abusive towards his family. So then I, I, I'm usually the ramp supervisor, but since she goes by herself, I was like, I'll go up with you. You know what I mean? So I came up, and as soon as I came up, she came over here like, no, we gotta call the police because he was screaming already in the, in the gay area, and everybody's just staring, you know? And she's kind of, the wife, her sister, and the kids were like kind of like in the corner, like right there, sitting in the front, and I, was, I noticed that there was fear. So then I looked at them, I'm like, are you guys okay? And then she's like, no, we need help. So that's when I pulled her off, and I told him to come with me, that I needed to talk to him away from the gate area. He just looked at me crazy, and he didn't get up. So then I told him, you guys step away, and I kind of got in between where he was sitting and where she right was. Here? And this was right there in the front where the kid with the yeah, 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 the burgundy. Yeah. Wow. This was another brave woman who stepped up to the man. It might look trivial, but as you'll soon see, it'll take several officers to subdue Ryan. So just imagine what one blow would do to a woman who's half his size. So I told her to come back here where this area is kind of away from them. So when she did that, he started following and wanted getting aggressive verbally. So then I told you're him, trying I was to talk like, to her, right? You're I trying to like, talk to her. No, I wanted to keep him away from her. You know what I mean? Because I saw the aggression building. So when he started walking, following me, like trying to get here to them, and I was like, sir, I'm going to call the police. You need to step away. So then he started walking that way, like rushing, like he was trying to get away. Once again, props to this brave supervisor. But I keep thinking about his family. Imagine such a huge guy threatening a woman and his own little daughter. It must be horrific to have to deal with that on a daily basis. Not even a secure airport door could stop him. Listen to this. So the family came here and I followed to see where he went so we can notify you guys. You know what I mean? Not close. I let the distance, you know what I mean? And he stopped at 42 and he was trying to blend in. So I came back and as soon as I came back, somebody said he's coming back and I looked and I told the family, I scanned my badge in here and I was like, you guys come in here because to me, this is a secured area on the jet bridge, you know what I mean? To keep them away. So I closed the door and the kids are crying and they're saying he gets like that when he drinks, he's, he's abusive, he gets aggressive. And who's telling he's you like, that? Them with the wife. She's like, he's gonna hurt somebody. He's gonna hurt somebody. And I was like, he can't get in here. He busted that door open like nothing. When like it was open. Busted, like he okay, went, the door, pulled it, it up. Like it was locked. Like if you but try to go like in there right now, it's not gonna open. Right. So that's what I thought. Yeah, right. He just went boof and opened the door. Okay. And I told him, sir, you can't be in here. And he just kind of shoved me out the way. Like, get out of my way. Okay. But with his body, right. not yeah, his no, hands. No, that's that's, you know that's still I mean? a battery. So, that's still a battery. So once he went in the jet bridge and he was telling her, like, you're really doing this to me? And he grabbed his cell phone and went boof right in there in the jet bridge. The supervisor then acted out the way the incident unfolded because this cop seemed to need a picture drawn in order to understand. He then asked her if she was scared, but she said she was just protective of the family, thinking about what he might do to them. But it wasn't over. She managed to trick him into going outside and then held the door with her hands. But he managed to rip it open and push her aside again. As I'm listening to her speak, all that time I'm wondering, where are the cops? Oh, here they are. He's inside. They're right here. Right here. What happened? I'm walking out here from Jersey if you need help. Yeah, I'm just looking for the bad guy. The bad guy's inside. He's inside. Right Sir, put your hands behind your back for me. No, no. Put your hands behind your back for me. I'm good. Whoa, that was a really tough job. 
Imagine if he managed to take a swing at the officer. That would have turned out to be a painful ordeal. He was tased multiple times with two tasers, and he still didn't go down. Seems like he even enjoyed it. You know, you're doing good. You okay, brother? Yo, you're pretty good, man. All right, good shot. All right, good shot. We'll give you that. You okay, brother? No, I'm not doing it. You need to get up? I'm going to stand up. You want to sit you down in a wheelchair? Just stand me up. Hey, we're going to stand you up. Yep. Get a wheelchair. You're smart. Get him on the side. There you go. Have a seat. Use his legs. Hey, help you up. Hey, listen, I just had too much time. I know. I know. All right. I know. I'm a truck. Sorry. Do me a favor. Break this leg. Okay, buddy. How long have you? Just breathe. Thanks for believing. Just breathe. Bring this knee up to your okay. chest, okay? All right. Come on, watch yourself. Come up. All right. One, two, two three. There you go. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We can leave right. over here. Sit down here. Sit down here. No, sit down. Do whatever you want. Whatever you want. Right there, buddy. No. There you go. No. Let's get out there. Come on. I'm one of the guys. Are you tired? Feet up. We're good. We're all there. Don't count, man. Another milestone accomplished. The guy's in the chair and being strapped in, and I don't think it's comfortable sitting there all shackled up. The stroll of shame as they take him out of the airport will be even less pleasant. For now, he seems to be in good spirits, but let's see what happens. Here we go. Please, Chose, how are you out here? I just want to get up. Relax. I just drank too much. I have a car downstairs from the game. You talk to your family. Your wife over here somewhere? Yeah. yeah Is there a plane attached to this jetway? No, anybody, anybody know? Anybody know? Hey, 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 let's go to the elevator. Is there a plane attached to this jetway? Hey, let's go, Take this out let's go to the elevator. Before, let's go to the elevator. We got you. The people see stay in the okay, at least the shame is there. The guy realized he'd had too much to drink, and he was embarrassed to be strolled out in a wheelchair in front of all the people. That's at least a good sign. Take this out, please. Please take Relax. this out of my chest. Uh, yeah, we're going to get him out as soon as I get over here. Hold my wife. Hold my wife. And there's that bully mentality again. Ryan reacts to everything with aggression and threats. That's what bullies do. And being his size, there are not many people who can be a threat to him physically. So he's probably used to getting his way with anything he wants. Yes. No. No, he's the Marine. Are you a Marine? I'm a Marine. You're the Marine? Yeah. What's our, what, what uh, crew? What crew? Yeah, what have you been with? I was here for 20 years. It was a whole bunch. Uh, uh, I've been in for about... You're a Marine? So, yeah, yeah. Let's start acting like one. All right. Ouch. That comment probably stung more than a hundred tasers ever could. My guess is that this guy's depressed and that his whole life is unraveling. So being a Marine is probably one of the rare highlights of his life, something he's most likely very proud of. And to be scolded like that by a fellow Marine sure doesn't feel nice. And you can see it on his face. This was probably the first time he bowed his head in shame throughout the entire ordeal. If you give me water, I'll be fine. If you give me water, I'll be fine. I got water, a cool water in my pool. Don't kick water. that, please, sir. I got water in my pool. Yes, sir. Just chill out. Relax. Go through this process That's and it. you put yourself in. Try that again, George. All right. You made your bet here. Yes, I did. All right. Sure. Come on. We got it. See this? You got it. Actually, he didn't just make his own bed. He made it for his entire family. You see, his family was actually on a trip to Disney World. Well, that's one vacation they'll surely remember for a long, long time. And still, he's acting like a Karen, completely oblivious to the reality that's about to hit him. And he's still brazen enough to threaten a cop. I just want to go home. Just bring him back to the fight. Yo, bring him back to the fight, bro. Nah, it's not going to happen, man. What do you do for a living? Just New York. I'm a worker. Oh, man. You're kidding me, right? You couldn't even just let me go? There's no letting you go. Right? Nah. Put your hands on your side. That's that point. I didn't even hit my wife. Right. She's not 
different flight. Look, she's calling me right now. Take the phone out of my pocket. That's my, that's my wife. Don't worry about it. If they're not even gonna let me go, what the f Stay seated. Don't ever grab me again. Hey, okay. stop. Okay. He's trying to make sure you're not going to fall. I know, I'm not going to fall on my face. I know how to act. No sir, you most certainly do not. You just assaulted your family and a flight supervisor, cussed at strangers, and resisted arrest. Blame it on the alcohol, but you're not acting like a decent human being after all. Luckily for the officers, Ryan continued to be somewhat compliant, and as they were chatting about him working in the iron industry, he revealed the real reason why he got drunk. That's some, that's some tough work. What are we going to do? Get in? No, stay, no, no, stay seated. Stay seated. You don't want to get up, man. Probably uh, the hardest work that uh, you can do. Iron work? Oh, yeah. You're you're oh. Problem, or you just drank too much today? I just drank. Flying? Fear of flying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, take a pill. I don't have one. Doctor will get you. Had a blast here. The kids went to Disney. The weather was awesome. Then you go back to New York. Yeah, should've, could've, would've. The only problem is he couldn't. He couldn't deal with his fears, he couldn't deal with his drinking, and he ended up in jail. He was charged with resisting an officer with violence, child abuse, domestic violence, battery, and disorderly intoxication. Oh yeah, and he was trespassed from the airport for a year. Don't be like Ryan, kids. Even though our buddy Ryan calmed down at the end and cooperated, for our next drunk lady, that was out of the question. So get ready, because this is going to be a wild one. In the incident that happened in March 2023, she was so drunk that she even took a swing at one of the gate agents. Are they trying to fight y'all? Uh -huh. Yeah, she does. Don't uh, know me. Don't know me. She swing on y'all? She swung on him. I mean, we just walked in there. She's just Hey, hold on just a second. Hold on. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> hey. Hey. What's going on? Huh? Can you talk to me? Can you talk to me? What's going on? Huh? No, I don't know where I'm going. What's going on? Oh my God. This woman is really hammered. She can barely speak, but she manages to mutter that she's going to Mobile, Alabama, and that she's going to leave in a minute. But we all know that's not happening, right? Have you noticed the lady on the right just hanging back with her beer like she couldn't be bothered? It's hilarious. Do you have a panic attack or something? Yeah. Oh, you just and panic. It's a minute. Oh, a minute. It's leaving. Okay, start It's leaving. Huh? It's leaving in a minute. Okay. In a minute. Hey, you, hey, let me, hey, answer my question. Have you had something to drink today? Yeah. Alcoholic beverages? Yeah. Where at? Just in the bar. This bar right over here? Yeah. How many did you have? Two. You had two drinks? Yeah. What kind? Um, Remember? Um, I had two whiskey sours. Whiskey sours? Yeah. Just two? Yeah. Okay, have you got your driver's license? Well, this seems civil enough. She's calm, manages to communicate somewhat, and even IDs herself without any issue. I guess this is going to be a short one, or is it? Do you have your driver's license? Yeah. I don't know where it is. Huh? I don't know where it is. Look in your wallet. Okay. I don't know where it is. Well, look in your wallet. I mean, it's got to be in your bag somewhere. Is that your wallet right there? Yeah. Uh, you need my license? Yeah, your driver's license. Okay, your wallet's right there. It's in her purse. I just put her license in her purse. In her purse? Yes. Her purse? Yes. Look in your purse. No, no it's a, it was a black purse. There's a black right purse. Yes. Yeah, it's in there. Look in there. So here we hit our first roadblock. 
she can't find her driver's license, and the staff isn't authorized to find it for her. So far, she's not getting arrested, and the officers aren't allowed to search her stuff. But we'll get through it soon, and then it's time for her to answer some questions. See it right there? See it right there? Yeah. Yeah, grab it. See it? Just flip it around in there. Right, right there, you got your hand on it. Yeah. Thank you. Can you get your boarding pass for me? Your boarding pass is in that right there. Can you find that? Okay, thank you. All right. So why are we why are we striking the the gate agent over here? Why are we trying to punch him? Did you hit the gate agent? No, I did him. Huh? I did him. You didn't touch him? No. Can you tell me again how many drinks you had? I had four. Huh? You had four? Yeah. Okay, before it was two, now it's four. You remember? Yeah, it's been three or four. It's been three or four, okay. Have you had anything to eat today? No. Okay, have you taken any medication? No medication. Okay, on a scale from zero, would be not being intoxicated at all, to ten, being the most intoxicated you've ever been, where do you think you are? All right, six, five or six. Five or six, okay, all right. The bartender confirmed she had five, but she might have come from another bar. She didn't have a receipt for the drinks, and she didn't even know what bar she was drinking at. So right now, the cops are waiting for EMS, and here they are. So uh, she was having a panic attack. She's been drinking. We just come in and check her out, make sure she's okay, and, uh, and we'll probably yeah. take her. So. Okay. Is it okay if we take your vitals? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Here. So he's just he does what you guys do. Patrick. Bye, bye. The woman is referring to her son, whom she was unable to get on the phone. But one officer does manage to speak with him, and that's when things start going from bad to worse because she's about to realize what's happening. Hey, is this Patrick? Hey, so this is Officer Lambert there in DFW Airport Police Department. We're out with, I'm um, guessing it's your mother right now. This uh, is Laura. Samuel Allen. She is uh, severely intoxicated right now. She uh, did try to uh, start the American Airlines gate attendant a couple times. So I'm just going to kind of be blunt with you. She's probably going to be coming with us for public intoxication. So she's going to be going to jail for a little bit until she throws it up. That is correct. What? Pretty much until she sobers up and we deem her that she's alright to take care of herself. And it's basically on the same line as a speeding ticket, but the reason that she's going in handcuffs is because uh, she's got to be under our watching care so she doesn't harm herself or anyone else. The officer explains the ticket's going to be around $300. The woman has gone silent for a moment, but that's not going to last for long. She has to pee very badly, and she's about to go into beast mode. Hey, Laura, can you stand up for me? You need some help? Appreciate it. Here. All right, turn around for us. Okay, go ahead and turn around for us. You're being placed under arrest for public intoxication. Okay. Come on, stand up for me. Come on. Okay, I got the other one. All right, back up. G 
Jesus Christ. I try not to take the Lord's name in vain, but the way this sounds, we might need an exorcism. It can't be that the peas making her sound like that. Maybe it's something else. She manages to slip off the chair, so the officers decide to put the seatbelt on her. But she's not giving up so easily. It's time for another demonic demonstration. <laughs> That sounded like she was speaking in tongues. You know, the way some Christians do, snake handlers, so forth. But I don't want to know who she was speaking with or what she was saying. By the way, this has to be one of the least dignifying ways to be escorted out of an airport. Do you think she'll kick the officers? Let's see. Extra charge. You you are shooting me. Do not kick me again. You are treading me. You are treading me. You are treading me. Oh my god, my hands. Oh my god, my hands. Oh my god, my hands. You are treading me. Settle down, Laura. You are torturing me. You are torturing me. Nobody's torturing you. You are torturing me. And on and on it goes. At one point, the officer stopped and checked her arms. There was nothing wrong with them, so they just pressed on to the amazement of all the people in the airport. I wonder what will happen when they get her to the car. <laughs> When the officer established that everybody had their cameras on, he did the brushing, and Laura was placed in the vehicle. And like all entitled Karens, she wonders why this is happening. Reality sets in, but she, of course, fails to acknowledge it. Why am I yelling at you for? Why am I yelling at you for? Why am I yelling at you for? Oh, I'm open to you! 
It's in the police car where people usually start to unravel. Once they're alone, reality starts to set in. But of course, Laura fails to acknowledge it. She believes there's no reason for her arrest and that the whole world is against her. Another prime example of the main character syndrome. She was charged with public intoxication and resisting arrest without violence. In my opinion, she got off easy. For this one, we hop over to Clarno, Wisconsin, where police officers were alerted that a 21-year-old male was causing a disturbance in the neighborhood. No airports this time. This drunk guy was banging on someone's door, yelling something about beer and threatening to bust inside. Little did he know that the people whose house he was invading had a weapon, and they were getting ready to shoot anyone who entered. Sheriff's office! Hey, wait, wait, this, wait, wait, is this your window? Sir, please. Hey, Sheriff's please. office. Get down Sheriff's here. Sheriff's office. No. Sir, can you come over here and speak to us? No. I'm yes, just... come over here and talk Listen, to me. Man, right now. This, man, this man wants to talk to you. All right. Then that's him. Do you have anything on you? No. Gun size, anything like that? Not shoot I don't have. I don't Hope have. Relax. <laughs> we'll figure out what's, what's going this? on. Okay, just relax. Is this please. your wallet? That's my wall. Okay. Right there. Why don't we go down here and talk, okay? See, no. Can I hit my vape, at least? We'll talk, okay? No. Can I hit my vape, at least? No, Just no, come down here right now. No, I'm not coming down here until we hit my vape. Can yeah, I hit my vape. vape? Where's your vape? My vape is in my pocket. That's all I care did you, about. Did you have a vape? <laughs> the vape should probably be the last thing on this guy's mind right now. I mean, there were people ready to shoot him, and now the cops are about to arrest him. And the thing he was holding in his hands was his shoe, which he was using to bang on the windows. The folks who lived there said they had no clue who this man was or what he was doing. He just appeared, started banging, and yelled something about beer in the yard. He was obviously pretty drunk, but at least he was in a good mood. Let's hear his side of the story. Okay. I'm fine. Can you tell yeah, me what that, happened? It's fine. This man hit me at the bar. We were playing some darts. Okay, what bar were you at? This bar. And we were playing some darts, and uh, this man socked me. Was this was tonight? Upset. Tonight. Okay. And he, and he was upset. He hit three balls in, and he was upset. So, like, I was a, I was a, I was a little upset. So, like, because he hit... The six ball, the eight ball, and he definitely hit the seven ball. 29 on 10 2. Can you start sad. EMS to have a uh, subject like that? Uh, just and need him looked over. He's, he's got a pretty shot. good bump on his head. Advise he was uh, struck in a bar earlier tonight. Okay. And where was this at? At this bar. Okay. But she was a little upset. I got a little What town upset. are you in? We were, How'd you get here? If you want to ask Dylan, that's my drive. So. Dylan is your driver? Dylan was my driver. Driver set, driver's license. You got some nicotine on me? We don't. <laughs> it's obvious this guy was experiencing an alcohol-infused meltdown, but for the time being, he's smiling and in good spirits. His story about playing darts doesn't make much sense, but he seems to remember very well who hit what ball and where. When it comes to drinking, he said he had a few beers and a few shots. A few too many, it would seem. How much did you drink tonight, bud? I drank two beers, and then I drank a couple shots here. Maybe two, three shots. So, I mean, you can stay here on the corner. I'm not going to drive. Okay. So, it doesn't matter. That's fine. It doesn't matter, because you're... I already saw you on the corner, so it doesn't matter. I mean... I'm gonna get my guy. I'm gonna get him to drive. Cause we're Just gonna, we gonna go back in there and have some more drinks. Whatever you say, you're not gonna say. That's the point. This man can be your supervisor. You're not gonna use. Okay. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? You want? You want three shots or two shots? One shot of so what? I mean, one shot of what? You're a and your cop is right there. Your cop is right there. And your cop is right in the corner. What do you want? Just to make sure you're what good. You that's what I want. No, that's not what you want. Yeah, yeah. What do you want? We're just here to make sure you're no, okay. No, it's not, it's not to make sure you're good. What do you want? So, you want a f***ing shot? You no, I'm good. A f you want I can't. a rebuttalment? I'm, I'm good. I can't. I'm working. It? You're good. I'm good. I so can't. So I can go back in the bar. Obviously, this guy thinks the house is the bar he was at earlier. That's why he was so adamant to go back inside. But how he got there in the first place is anyone's guess. No, you're not going inside. Not going inside. No, I can't go inside. Here, no, you because the EMS 
and allows me to do that. So if you deny me my arrest to go there, then I call the EMS. Nope, just have a seat just, for me. I have a seat for you. Just no. stay down for a second. That's not, that's not, I can get the EMS boys to come out here right now. I can get the boys to come out here right now. And you know that. Okay. So I mean, if you deny me, then, okay, come on. Just sit down. Have a then seat I'm for gonna, me. Then I'm, gonna, seat. then I'm gonna call the fucking boys. You don't have to call anyone. We already have EMS I'm, I'm coming. I'm calling the boys, just so you know. Do you have a seat no. for me? Hey, hey. No. Nope, we're not no, doing if that. You, nope. If you doing if that. You no. Go ahead and place out. your yeah. hands behind your back. The arrest was imminent. To be honest, I was surprised they didn't do it immediately because they saw him banging on the window as they were approaching the house. This guy is clearly out of touch with reality and needs to cool off in jail for a while. You're gonna lose your badge. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna lose your badge. Your, your friends aren't in there, all right? You're gonna lose your badge. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you're gonna lose your badge, okay. sweetheart. That's fine. You're gonna lose your badge. Are you right now what is your name i want all your names hold Hallmark. up Hallmark. hold up stay hold down. up hold up I, I, i'm just, just staying down stay down sit down i'm just stay down. there i just told you I'm my name hallmark hallmark stromberg what's your name stromberg marish marish i'm gonna f you up i'm gonna f you up <laughs> and he seemed like a fun guy now he's just being an obnoxious douchebag when EMS arrived, they tried to assess the suspect, but they did not want to transport him due to his uncooperative behavior. It seems they were right to do so because his behavior was just getting worse and worse. Man, my leg is hurt. My leg is hurt. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go. My leg is hurt. You can take him oh, in the car. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I said I don't feel comfortable transporting anyways. Man, so. my no, leg. No. Maybe, 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 maybe. Oh. <laughs> Just have to uh, uh, <laughs> Look at you, dumb uh, You wanna f***ing take me in? I've seen you. I've seen you. Yo, Josh and John has been gambling your money. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. Yeah, f Getting this guy processed was not an easy task, physically or psychologically. But the officers managed to remain composed and got the job done. The guy who had the meltdown ended up getting charged with two counts of felony battery or threat to an officer, misdemeanor counts of resisting obstructing an officer, and two counts of disorderly conduct. A few months later, the felony charges were dropped, and he got 18 months of probation. Today we had a whirlwind of alcohol-infused shenanigans, but for some reason, it feels like they all got off easy. In my opinion, there should be a charge for being an entitled Karen or Darren with a mandatory jail sentence. Otherwise, they'll never learn. Let me know if you agree in the comments below, and be on the lookout for the next hidden file.